But now to our location report. The film is Hawks, a low-budget black comedy about two men who face up to terminal illness. The director is an American, Robert Ellis Miller, who made Reuben Reuben, and co-stars Anthony Edwards, last seen in Top Gun. But chief attraction is Timothy Dalton, now better known as James Bond, after his debut in the role in The Living Daylights. Film 87 caught up with him on location in Charing Cross Hospital, where, confined to bed in a cancer ward, under the control of Julie T. Wallace's nursing sister, he first encounters his fellow sufferer, Mr. Edwards. All right, rehearsal. Let's uh, shoot the rehearsal. Three, five, six, take five. And action, Anthony. Struggle to wake. Cue, Tim. Typical. You slip a tube in your arm, next thing you know, everyone's wearing tubes in their arms. Cue. How long has he got? Now, Mr. Bancroft. You know very well we don't talk about patients like that. Come on, sister. I just want to know if it's worth striking up a conversation. Can you keep him going till he begins to bore me? Some people walk out of here. Yeah. You. And, of course, those two ladies who bring round the Bible books. You should treat us like kamikaze pilots. Till we go out in a blaze of chrysanthemum, we ought to be surrounded by the fairest fornication has to offer. Not those two enormous asses. Cut. Print. He's, uh... Ordinary fellow, really, solicitor from the north of England. Um, put into what for him is obviously an extraordinary circumstance, but for others, I'm afraid, is depressingly ordinary. I mean, we all know someone who's died of an illness or friends, relatives, whatever. An extraordinary situation, and it's how he handles it. I'm looking for a sense of bravery from Timothy Dalton as the scene begins. It's the first time in which Timothy Dalton and Anthony Edwards meet in this place. And uh, I, I want to create an, a strong attitude from Timothy. He's a very serious actor, and he's wonderful to direct because he's full of questions, thoughts, ideas. He brings me 10 times more than I can use. And we sift through that and make a decision about how to proceed. Well, he, he's great. I mean, he's a fantastic kisser. And uh, he, uh, you know, I mean, Tim's a great actor. I mean, it's a pleasure to work with him. Such praise for Dalton from his director and co-star is not altogether surprising. After all, it was Dalton's commercial muscle that secured the finances for the film. And that, perhaps, makes Dalton's own natural reticence away from the cameras the more unexpected. Well, I mean, I guess I grew up wanting to be an actor, not a celebrity. Um, you know, moments both go together. But um, I'm very proud and happy of uh, what we managed to achieve with the Bond film. Um, but now I'm doing another job, and in, in, in a few months I'll be doing a play in the, in the West End of London. I don't really see myself as a celebrity. And I'm not entirely sure I like that anyway. Seems to me something rather narcissistic about it, and... Uh, I don't know. Uh, people seem to... Uh, you, you're famous just if you get your name in the paper, right? Since TV's Life and Loves of a She-Devil, Julie T. Wallace has certainly become famous, but small parts in The Living Daylights and Hawks, both with Dalton, have not brought the big movie breakthrough. You know, we did She-Devil all on video, and then having to go, like, onto the James Bond set, to the big, you know, enormous camera, lots of people, um, is, is quite shocking. In a way, I wish we were trained. Some, of our, some part of our training was to do with filming, because it's quite shocking. I mean, I've heard, heard all these horror stories that, you know, films you just get on you have your you know you have a sex scene with someone you've never met them before and it's probably we were talking about it yesterday it's really quite quite daunting but luckily you know and then that's never happened and the best place you can find to take a pulse isn't there something you could simply uh, toy with for a while we're a little fast today mm. more than a little fast today <sighs> why if i'm dying do i feel so good one more I think it should touch people worldwide. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do it. And I think uh, if you want to make any mention about the living daylights, the nice thing is that I think my doing it enabled the finances to fall in place this year. So in that sense, I mean, the two have combined terrifically well. Doing some of the scenes, they're just so full of pathos. And, you know, the people have been crying on the crew, also laughing heartily. So it's... It's quite a bizarre piece, I think. Because it's not about death, really. It's about living and, and... It's just funny. It's great writing. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, you know, you've got to treat life with some humour, haven't you? You know, I mean, that's, uh, it's a good attitude to take. Pugnacious. Tough. Have a laugh. 
be good-humoured, resourceful and resilient. Even in a cancer ward. <laughs>